Hey everyone, in this video we are going to create an Android app which will be able to detect the human pose and for this video we are going to use a TF Lite model, we will deploy the TF Lite model and we are going to use camera 2 API to stream the frames directly from the back camera of the device. So let's start this video. So here is the model which we are going to use is a pose estimation and it is provided by TensorFlow. So we can just download the starter model from over here. Once you click on that you will be taken to this page over here. Now what you can do, you can uh, let's say download this lightning one and we want the TF Lite model so we will say TF Lite and I'm going to use uh, let's say this float 16 model so I just click on download so now it will going to download in your local storage so here's the model which we have just downloaded now let's open our android studio and create a new empty project let's create a new project empty activity and let's just name it pose detection and hit enter so the language I'm going to use will be a Kotlin language so the very first step we will specify the permissions since we want to read the frames from the camera so let's open our manifest file and let me just zoom it now first of all let's just say use this permission so we are just going to use single permission which will be camera let's just specify it over here and close now we're going to handle this permission then later on we will use camera to api to read the frames then finally we will import the model and send every single frame to the model then we'll get out the prediction out of it and draw the prediction on the image then show that image to the user so let's start first by accepting the permissions so let's just create a simple function get permissions and define a function over here get permissions and in this we will just first check check self permission and the permission we are going to use is android manifest dot permission dot camera permission and if this is not equal to package manager dot permission granted then we are going to request for the permission the permission will be camera permission so it just need a array of all the permissions you want to request and then finally the request code now once this uh, request for the permission a callback function is called which is on request permission result and in this we will just going to check if grant result 0 since it is the only single permission which we are asking from the user if grant result 0 is equal to it's not equal to package manager dot permission granted then again we will just ask for get permissions this is how you will be able to handle the permissions and now once we have the permission let's just define our basic layout so I'm just going to split it and use a simple relative layout. Now I'm going to use camera to API to read the frames, but I will just be very quick since I have already created a detailed video already on this channel. Uh, this is camera to API previewing and capturing the image by using Kotlin language. You can check it out if you want very detailed version of how to do uh, how to read the frames by using camera to API. But don't worry, I'll explain it over here also. So let's just create a simple text view. So we'll use text view to preview the frames initially so I'll just say match parent and as well as match parent let's just give it an ID of text view now finally let's get back to our main activity.kt and in the class let's just initialize this um, text view text view and we are going to use uh, camera manager also so let's just initialize it let let in it where camera manager of kind of camera manager now after getting the permissions we will just initialize all of these variables over here we'll say text view is equals to find view by id r dot id dot text view and finally the camera manager will be equals to get system services and the service we are requesting for camera service we will just type cast is as camera manager now once the camera manager is initialized and the text view is initialized we are going to attach a listener to the text view so we'll say text view is equals to uh, surface text listener is equals to object of text view dot surface texture listener and in this we need to implement some methods which is on uh, available and on texture destroyed and on texture destroyed we will just return false over here and on texture updated now when the surface texture is available we are going to open the camera since the texture view is now initialized so now we need to define this open camera function real quick we'll say function open camera now in this open camera we will use camera manager to open the camera so we'll say camera manager dot open camera now it need a camera id callback and then handler so the camera id will be camera manager dot camera list id will use zero camera then it need a callback so we'll just create a object of camera device dot state callback and then finally it need a handler let's first do it for we'll implement the methods on opened on uh, disconnected and then finally on error and we need to define this handler as well so let's just define the handler over here you see let in it where let in it where handler of kind of handler and also we will use handler thread so we'll just say handler thread of kind of handler thread 
now we will uh, initialize this handler over here but before handler thread handler thread is equals to handler thread and we will pass the name as let's say video thread name of the thread and finally we will start the thread real quick we will say handler thread dot start and handler is equals to uh, handler we will pass this handler thread the constructor dot looper done now once we have the handler defined over here you will still be getting this error so you just have to click on this and suppress this uh, error since we have already checked for the camera permission and accepted the permission from the user now once the camera is open we are going to use camera device to create a capture request and then capture session that's all we need to do so first let's create a capture request we'll say capture request is equals to p0 dot create capture request and now it need a template so we'll say camera device dot template preview since we want to do for preview now once we have the capture request next thing we need to do is add a target to this capture request so we'll say add target now it need a surface so the surface we are going to take from the texture view so let's just quickly do that we'll say add target now it need a surface and let's just define the surface real quick over here we'll say surface is equals to uh, surface pass it from the constructor and now we need the surface texture we will use texture view to get the surface texture so it's not surface texture now once we have added the target of the texture view surface over here to the um, camera device now next thing we need to do is create a capture session so we'll say p0 dot create capture session and in this it need to have uh, let me just show you p0 dot create capture session now in this it need a list of surface then a callback and then a handler so let's do that we need a list of surface which we have already defined which is this surface now it need a callback also so let's create a object of camera capture session dot state callback and then finally it need a handler which is that handler now let's implement the methods on configured and on configured field now when it is configured then we are interested in this so we'll say p0 dot set repeating request and in this you have to pass this uh, request so we'll say dot build this request and then finally for the hand uh, this callback and this handler we will just read a uh, pass null over here that's all code, uh, code you have to do for opening the camera and previewing all the frames directly from the back camera of the device to this screen over here now if you run your app like this you should be able to see so it is asking for the camera permission let's give while using the app and let's run it one more time and now you can see the preview of the frames directly from the back camera on the screen is over here now let's close the emulator and get back to our main app okay so now the next thing we have to do is uh, get back to our surface texture over here so every time when the frame is updated it uh, this uh, particular function is called which is on texture updated so what we have to do is get the bitmap from when the texture is updated get the bitmap and then uh, produce the prediction pass that bitmap from the model and get the prediction and then draw the prediction on the bitmap and then show that bitmap to the user so for showing the bitmap we are going to use image view so i'll just say image view make sure it is on the top of texture view it will be match parent match parent and let's just give it a id of let's say image view uh, let's just give a background so that you now what we have to do is initialize this so we'll say late init where image view image view and also we are going to use bitmap so we'll say late init where bitmap bitmap now we will initialize this image view is equals to find view by id r dot id dot image view now once our image view is now created successfully we need to get the bitmap from the texture view when it is updated so we'll say bitmap is equals to texture view dot bitmap And you have to pass this null pointer exception now once you have the bitmap we need to import our model and uh, get the prediction from this bitmap so let's click on file new and then other and then tensorflow light model and click on this folder icon and locate wherever your tensorflow light model is which in our case is in download so let's click on open and let's hit finish so after a few seconds you should have this code uh, template code over here so i'll just copy this code and paste all of this code in over here let's import and import tensor buffer also and import data type also and for this byte, byte buffer let's just leave it as it is for this context you have to pass this and cut this model we need to declare this model globally uh, and we will just get this value out of it and we will say let init where model and the type of the model is this one so i'll just paste it over here now once you have the model uh, the other thing you have to do is close the model and you're only going to close the model when the app is destroyed so we'll say on destroy model dot close and let's just get rid of these comments also now to solve this byte buffer uh, error we need to create a tensor image right so let's just create a tensor image real quick we'll say tensor image is equals to tensor image 
and you have to import it and the data type we have to pass we'll say data type dot hue int 8 the same data type of this so it has to be u int 8 now we'll use tensor image dot load this bitmap like this and you can pass this tensor image over here we'll say tensor image dot buffer we'll get the buffer out of this tensor image now the problem is that this tensor image could be of any shape of height and width but we need to resize it to 192 by 192 so let's real quick do that for that we are going to use image processor so let's just initialize let in it where image processor and import this image processor now we will initialize this image processor we will see image processor dot builder and you have to add the resize operator to it so we will say resize op and now height and width and then finally the method we will say resize op dot you have to import this dot method dot bilinear and finally build this now we have the image processor now we are going to use image processor to resize the image so it is going to return us once again tensor image we'll say tensor we'll just override this tensor image by saying image processor dot process and we will pass this tensor image as it is and now if we run our app like this it should be able to run and preview the frames on the screen but we are not doing uh, anything to preview the updated the prediction on the screen so for doing that our predictions are in this output feature zero so let's just get the float array out of it now our prediction is in output features zero and let me just so in our prediction you can see that the sh the output are basically 16 key points and for every key point there are three values okay so it is actually first coordinate is y coordinate and then x coordinate and then the next value is the confidence associated to it so let's just do the same since we have our float array over here so it's a 1d array so first three values will be associated to nose so first value will be y coordinate of the nose then x coordinate of the nose and then confidence of the key point nose and then later on the next three values will be related to left eye and next three values right eye and so on so let's just do the same we will iterate in this output feature zero and draw the circle around the detected key point so for that we are going to use canvas and paint so let's just get to the top and define our paint real quick once the paint is defined let's get in over here let's just specify some properties for the paint the only property i'm going to define is set color and i will define the color as let's say yellow okay so now once we have the paint we need a canvas for it so we'll say where canvas is equals to canvas and import it now it need a bitmap but the mutable bitmap so this bitmap is not mutable we need to convert this bitmap to mutable bitmap so for that we'll say mutable is equals to the previous bitmap dot copy and now it needs the method so we'll say bitmap dot config dot argv 888 and then finally true uh, since we want it to be mutable now we will pass this mutable in over here and now we have the canvas and now we can use canvas dot circle to draw the circle uh, on the particular key point now we have everything we have xy value and the confidence and paint and canvas now we need to just iterate inside this output feature zero and draw the key points but here is a, a twist that uh, the output are basically normalized between 0 to 1 so we need to scale it to basically whatever the height and width of the bitmap is so we need to get the height also we'll say height is equals to bitmap dot height and width as bitmap dot width and now we are going to iterate so for iterating we are going to use x variable then finally we'll say while x is greater than 49 you'll see why uh, now we'll say while x is greater than equal to 49 and we'll say if the output features 0 dot get x plus 2 so first uh, 0 is the y coordinate then 1 is the x coordinate and then the second is the confidence associated to it so if we say x plus 2 is greater than let's say 0.45 if it is greater than 45 percent then we are going to draw that particular key point so we'll say canvas dot circle draw the circle now first we need the x coordinate so x coordinate is the x plus 1 value so we'll say output features 0 dot get x plus 1 and then finally the y coordinate which is the 0th one which is just the x so we'll say dot get x just the x1 and then finally it needs the paint and the radius so radius let's just define and f now as i said these values are normalized between 0 to 1 we need to scale them so y will be multiplied by the width and x will be multiplied by the height now it's not over yet since we need to update the value of x so we have already consumed 0 1 2 so we have consumed three values so we are going to increment the x by 3 since we have consumed the three values already 
now finally once all the result is drawn on this mutable we are going to say image view dot set image bitmap to be this mutable that's all now let's try to run our app and hopefully it should run as we expect it actually i'm sorry guys uh, it should be while x is less than equal to zero oh my god how can i do that let's try to rerun our app once again and then we will see okay so it is now running and let's try to do the prediction and if i just change my orientation of the device now you can see that it is able to detect all the key point on the face and if i try to run it once again with some different face and you can see that it is able to do so here is another image and here you can see that it is running in real time and able to detect all the key point on the body now you can run this on, on an actual physical device and check this out how it runs and fpi should be pretty good also and other than that you can apply all the transformation or prediction or whatever you want to do with the key points by just getting them from over here out feature zero so this is it for this video i hope you have learned something new today and after this you should be able to detect the key point of a human body so this is it and i will catch you in the next video till then goodbye